Welcome, amazing, resilient, and thriving, how's that for adjectives, uh, agents and investors from across the country. Today is Thursday, March 26, 2020, and this is mastermind call number 271. I just want to start off real quick with two things. Uh, we're not going to dwell on, you know, on the negative things that are going on around us because we're all overcoming it, but um, I did want to share with you a, a, a positive. If you're not aware of it, Chad is doing a Shift Happens every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from noon to 1 Eastern time in our Facebook group. And uh, listen to the first one yesterday, great stuff. It, it's not as probate specific as most of the stuff we do, but Chad, you want to say a few words about it rather than have me summarize it? Yeah, so I mean, this call is reserved. This call and our role play call, we kind of reserve for you know specific probate topic, the topic of probate and everything around it. And my intent with with shift happens was to kind of just show you all the ways that you can prepare your business for what's coming. And probate obviously is is in the middle of all that. But uh, we're we're broadening the the topics that we normally teach on. So we're looking at you know how to from a mindset, a financial standpoint, and uh, we'll soon get into operations like how the actual you know logistics of how do you work with you know your buyers and sellers and the difference like escrow, pipeline, term prospecting to uh, to not only you know set your business up to to thrive in it or to survive an environment like we're heading into, but also how to thrive in that and potentially make it one of your best years ever. So that's the intent. Um, tomorrow, uh, it's so at noon Eastern, um, I caught a little bit of an audible. A friend of mine owns several title companies, and they're doing electronic closing. So they have e-notaries and e-settlements. And we're going to have Mo on as kind of a guest, and we're going to look at how we can get the most of your deals in escrow closed now while we still have an opportunity before, you know, as cities are starting to shut down more and more. So it's it's a pretty dynamic schedule, like based on what's happening in the environment and the people that, that I think can bring the most value to you or the content that's going to be most valuable at the time is kind of the schedule we go with. So. Uh, it's it's you know I, we've I've got a good idea of what the next three or four will be, but we're really going to let you guys like the you know what we hear, what you guys need is we'll be presenting. Um, so that's kind of the idea. It's it's just a way for us to you know to help you know, help give you access to us and our experience in going through environments like even building businesses in environments. Like and if there's anything that you wish we were talking about that you haven't heard us talk about then you know, please send an email to support and say, hey, can you, can you try to include this and shift happens? Because the idea is not to design something we think is right. It's to design to the need that you guys have. So if you have ideas and we're not covering it, please let us know, and, and we'll, we'll look at designing content in that direction. Excellent. And you know, that's the big picture on the probate horizon. I've kind of gone on the podcast circuit this week. I did a podcast on Tuesday for uh, some great real estate coaches, Tim and Julie Harris. Uh, if any of y'all want to listen to that, you can just go to their website, I believe, timandjulieharris.com. And this morning I did one for a Tom Ferry coach, Joe Mendoza, who is also a customer of ours. So if any of you are in the Tom Ferry organization, you should be able to get access to that. And then finally, if any of you have a group, uh, company, um, you know, affiliation, you know, any any number of people that you would like for me to do one of the podcasts for, I'd be glad to. And it, it is more probate specific. You know, if you're a probate customer, uh, you can really expand your business. And if you're not, you can really jump in and use this niche to, uh, you know, to still have a great year regardless of what happens. Uh, that's all I've got. Tim, anything you want to share? Yeah, I was just going to comment, you know, uh, Chad and Jim are doing an excellent job of kind of spreading the word around about some things that we feel like we can do, and I think it's important to know that I hear a lot of background noise. Yeah, I got it. Every week that happens, somebody is, is signing up as an admin, they're hitting the wrong button, but I, I got them. Okay. Um, I, uh, Jim and Chad are doing an excellent job of, of putting a lot of information online, and certainly we're all doing what we can to uh, find the things that are going to help all of us 
pull together and, and like Chad said, I think a good way to put it is figure out a way to thrive in this. And, you know, we don't want to downplay the, the seriousness, of this, seriousness of this by any stretch. And we've all got, you know, friends and family and things that we, you know, we spend our days being concerned about. And it's a very, you know, tough time for us. But uh, we're working hard to make sure that we do what we can to enable you to do well. And part of what I'm doing is spending some time on the phone across the country with uh, agents and investors talking with them about what's going on in their individual markets, in particular some of the ones that are being harder hit and, you know, are they finding ways to uh, make it work. And I, I just have to tell you, I've been stunned by the, the progress that people are making uh, in markets that you would assume they might be having some challenges in. And, uh, you know, we're, New York is one of them. I talked to a fellow there a couple of days ago and uh, you know, they're, they're certainly having challenges doing some of the stuff that they're doing, but he's making money, and he, uh, he's definitely been able to uh, negotiate some deals there with some people, and I, I know that the, they're, you're not supposed to be out, outbound prospecting on the phone and do all that, and he's just been very careful to do it the right way, and I just got off the phone a couple minutes ago with a, uh, an agent here in Florida who made a sale yesterday, uh, got it closed. Chad is going to spend some time with you tomorrow talking about how to pull some of these deals that are sitting in escrow. You're worried about getting them done. How are you going to get that through the process? And uh, we're also going to be looking at uh, helping, helping the process along from the lender side because some of the challenges that the lenders are going to have is employment verifications in some cases for companies that have less people working and all of that, and what I've found on the national calls that I've been on is that some of those requirements are going to be relaxed, and they're going to find ways to maybe come back at it a little bit after the fact, but they're going to try to get things closed, even though uh, you're just finding the government really pitching in pretty hard to try to make things work better, and no, it's not perfect, but they're sure trying, so uh, be encouraged by that, and uh, just keep on trucking. We're going to do everything we can to keep you moving. And you're at the right place at the right time. This should be a great call. I'm done now. All right. And I just want to add one thing to that, another example of the resilience of you guys. There, there's about a half a dozen courthouses where we know we are not going to be able to collect data for the next month. Um, when I've talked to those agents, not all of them, but a majority of them have opted to get data in an adjoining county. And a few of them have just said, well, you know what, give me a couple months historical leads because, you know, those people still need to sell. So just because if that happens to you, which is highly unlikely, there, there are options. So, you know, call us and we'll discuss that. And we'll always err in your favor. We'll always give you more than you were getting before for, you know, the same or, or a better price. So reach out if you have a concern. But so far, the vast majority of the, uh, of the counties we collect in, we're still good. Tom, anything you want to add? Just reinforce what you all said. We're here to help, and if you need issues, we've got a great support team, and uh, you know we're always here to, to help from a coaching perspective, too. So that's it. All right. Well, we only have nine in the queue. It's going to be a relatively <laughs> easy week. Yes, sir. Um, I, I did schedule Mark Street. Uh, we had such a happy man. I was actually going to defer that into April. But we had 30-some people already signed up and, and a lot more asking about it. So uh, March Probate Mastery, it was a, a little bit of short notice. Um, I did put a post in the Facebook group, and I will send an email today. But if you want to get in on, on the Mastery class, it is Monday, to, this coming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 2 p.m. Eastern until we finish. Now, <laughs> sometimes that's 2 to 6, sometimes that's 4. It really depends on how engaged the group is. But... Usually we run nine to twelve hours at this point. So okay, Monday, great. Tuesday, Wednesday, the thirty first and April first is uh, March Mass. Anybody wants to jump in? Perfect. And hey, Tom, let me ask you something. Uh, from my perspective, both Tim and Chad are breaking up. Are you hearing that too? Yeah, I actually did. Um, both yeah, of those. It, it, I thought it was yeah, I don't know. from my end. <laughs> no, you must just. I just wanted you guys to be aware. I'm I'm aware of it in. Tim, you weren't breaking up as much as it sounds like you had a bad cold, and I know you're not sick, so uh, we'll just have to deal with it if it, we understand it may be the conference line that's having issues, and, you know, just like the inter internet, everything's overworked, so we are yeah. aware of it, and 
Pick the phone up just a second. I don't know if that's any better, but I can tell you uh, that much, much better. Everything, everything having to do with bandwidth uh, today is being challenged because people are using it more than they ever did before because so many people are operating from home. And uh, yeah. I've you know, been on another call talking to some people about that issue, and uh, people are trying to get it fixed. But we were on uh, Zoom this morning trying to get something done with that, and Chad and I were working on it, and it was taking four and you know, four and five minutes, sometimes we get screens loaded. So we'll just do the best we can. If you can't yep. hear us, punch, punch at us. <laughs> That's much better, Tim. All right, first up is a lady that I think got left in the queue last week, or she dropped out of the queue, I'm not sure. But Aileen, you're up first. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. John, you're up first, 5221. Aileen, you're on deck. Hey, how are you? I was When I heard it, uh, I thought, He's got the wrong guy. I'm not a lady. <laughs> Previous, been previously. Out. I've been called or, a lot, but I've never yeah. been called a lady. <laughs> this is John, formerly known as Eileen. Exactly. <laughs> hey, um, Tim, Tim, thank you very much personally for um, speaking with me the other day. And, and, and to add on, perhaps Chad can chime in. Chime in. Um, we decided that I'm going to, using voice logic, I forwarded the information that Steve Lindo sent over their different programs, and we're going to do a split test since I do several counties. One of the counties I'm going to put on, we'll call it their ISAs, their live callers. Now, the question was, there's two different alternatives besides the ISA. There's the voicemail drop, where they just, ringless voicemail, rather. And then there's the one where they have the live person call and ask if they want to listen to a message. I forget what the heck that one's called. They're both message drops, but one's facilitated by live person. So for split test purposes, what would you recommend? I'm going to do the ISA for one county. And then for the second county, just the voicemail, ring with voicemail or the uh, live person facilitated uh, voicemail. So my question, my answer on this is changing because of the, the changing environment that we're in. Ringless voicemail, unless you have explicit written consent, is a direct violation of TCPA. It's normally not a real high risk. A lot of people do it. Very few people get caught. However, in environments like this, you have to understand there are attorney's offices that have big payrolls, and those people aren't working. They're looking for any litigation they can find right now. And go look at the litigation levels that come through courts and recessionary periods. So the attorneys who have been running the radio ads in the state of Florida um, that are aggressively trying to get TCPA lawsuits started, they're, they're, they were going to be looking for blood in the water. So my advice is really, really understand your risk, understand TCPA, and understand you are more likely to get sued for anything right now than you have been in the last 10 years. So I would recommend that you use the live callers or voicemail courier. Both of those are perfectly legal and, and neither violate TCPA. That's why Voice Logic has made the move because they're they're finding that their hold harmless is maybe not as good as they thought too. So. I would just stick with, with the things that you know don't carry any risk and don't give people uh, a reason to come it. after you right now. Got it. That, that answers it. I'll, I'll, I won't go with the ring list. I'll go with the alternative. Um, next question. i got three altogether. Next question is, um, uh, Jim, I think we agreed. I just want um, verification that it's a good idea to add a fourth letter, a six-month letter, that new historical letter. So I have month one, month two, month three, a letter going out right now. Um, where you think it's a good idea, if you can afford it, to add that historical letter at month six. Is that correct? Correct. And and, and we talked about it, John. It's it's really should be the least expensive uh, of your campaigns. If you if you monitor and update your CRM by month six, you should have disqualified probably 75, 80 percent of your leads. So it's just going to yeah. go out to the ones that you've never spoken to or the yeah. ones 
that haven't told you no. So it's going to be, yeah, the 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 the, re, the risk re, or the expense reward ratio on that should be huge. And I would even consider a year letter for the the same thing if you if you're if you're that diligent monitoring your leads because after a year. You may only have 10 left. It's going it's to get increasingly more affordable, and your conversion rate's going to go up the higher, the farther back you go. You go. Good point. I think, yeah. I think I'll do that. Now, so that segues to the last question, which is now when we're talking about um, hiring ISAs, let's just say for sake of argument it's a buck a call. At some point you have to say I'm, I'm drilling in a dry hole. How many times do I have them call? Is it obviously isn't once, but calling 50 times when no one ever answers is probably a waste of time too. So where is that line where you say, okay, we've given this a valiant shot. We're still going to keep the letters going, but spending money on phone calls to this particular person is, is not cost effective. 60% of all sales happen after call attempt number four. So four is, your, four is your absolute minimum. 83% of sales happen between call five and call 12. So if somewhere between four and 12, whatever you can afford. Somewhere between four and 12, I hate that because that's really broad. <laughs> okay, 15. 15, John. What's that? 15. You think you're gonna, you'll, like, he's being you sarcastic. Go to, you go to 15, I'm, I'm not. I mean, it's the, uh, the answer is whatever your budget will allow is how aggressive you should call. Like, you should call as many times as it takes to get these people on the phone. And you got to stop out yeah. more based on your budget. Like, what are you willing to spend to my find out budget, which ones need your help? Not, my budget is unlimited in the sense that I'm not destitute and I can afford to spend money but I hate to waste money. The problem is, you know, once you've been doing this two years and you've got data, you know, in your particular market for what you're doing, that after the 13th call, it's just pissing money away. When you're just been Here's the deal. So, John, month, have, you watched, have you watched the Dental video that, we, that he and I did last year? Which one? David Pinnell. You're breaking up. You're David breaking Pinnell. Up. David Pinnell oh, in Texas. Yeah, absolutely. Of course I do. So they, you know, he, he has full-time days on salary, and they burn it up and they burn up the list. There's, there's, it's not a coincidence that he has a steady pipeline of listings that he's, he yeah. first talked to you know, 10, 12 months ago. So what I'm saying is if you want to be aggressive, keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. And you'll get a you'll get a similar result. You'll be in seven digits of of revenue if, if you're that aggressive. And John, I think one thing you and I discussed is, you know, if you're paying to have a call made three or four times, it's probably going to be pretty much during normal business hours, and you're not getting a response. You you don't mind getting on the phone. So maybe though maybe those calls that didn't get a weren't reached in the three or four times you you know you call those nights and weekends bury your bury your call times and you may want to jump in and because if you're calling somebody during the same time or the same i believe most isa companies are going to call nine to five monday through friday i could be wrong but if, if they're not getting people yeah so if you're not getting people during those times then after a certain number let's just say four then you pick up the phone start calling them and call them nights or saturday mornings or weekends and i i'll bet you'll get some of them at different times that they're not getting during the times they're calling. So, you know, that'll cut your budget down. And I know you're not shy about getting on the phone. We've got to find something for you to do anyway. I know, <laughs> I know you're going to go out there and, uh, and, and focus on the attorneys, but uh, that doesn't mean you have to be hands-off on making some follow-up calls yourself. No, I, yeah, think, I, think, I, I think what I'll do just based on this conversation, obviously when data comes in, it can adjust. I think I'll have them do five. And then I will pick up, uh, you figure a lot will drop. The whole idea is I'm not going to be making 600 calls a month myself. It isn't going to happen. But right. this will weed out enough that, that I should be able to uh, reasonably be able to do other things besides phone calls and still make phone calls. Up to, up to 15, I guess, is good with the Mojo Dialer. It's not all that big of a deal. 
if you've got 100 or 200 calls to make. When you've got 600 calls to make, you're talking a lot of time that I don't have. All right. Sure. So I, I think that um, a shift happens Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the Facebook group at what time? Uh, one east, uh, 12, 12 Eastern. <clears throat> we actually ran 12 to 2 yesterday. It's pretty much we'll start at 12 and finish when we finish. Okay, good deal. Thanks, guys. All, All right. Done. Thank you, John. As always, you're a great participant. Next up is the lady, Aileen, that I thought was first, ending in 4800. You're up next. Thank you, Jim. Um, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I appreciate the time. I just, um, you know, a bit overwhelmed by everything, and uh, probably about two weeks before um, everything kind of really started when before we were fully quarantined, um, I had a, a probate leave that, that listed and we put it on the market and got multiple offers and then shortly right after that um, things got very quiet. So what I've been doing is, you know, going into my into my pipeline, into my probate pipeline and calling people, you know, really coming from a place or coming from a place of contribution. I feel like I, we're all in it together. We all are going through the same exact thing for the most part. So just empathizing with people and talking to them and, and you know, and checking in. And so I, my, the reaction that I've received is that people are very um, appreciative of, of me calling and not necessarily like, oh my gosh, what are you calling me about houses right now um, or my prop or a property or whatever but more about just that connection and, and being appreciative of it. I think one of my biggest questions right now is because I'm homeschooling a bunch of kids, um, schedule is so not normal, and I want to continue to call my new leads and call on old leads at the same time, um, just not finding it more challenging. Like I was before calling 25 leads a day, of new leads and then also doing follow-up. And now I'm finding it more challenging to find that, you know, block of time. So I guess, you know, I always think of like what's my one thing that I need to do during this time that's going to, you know, be that domino that, that creates everything else. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Can I give you a gift? Sure, love it. <laughs> So jump on Amazon and get yourself a copy of the five-hour school week. Five hours uh, a week? The five-hour school week. So it, the title was uh, Tim, Tim Ferriss wrote the four-hour work week back in 2008 or nine. And if you follow Tim Ferriss, he's a pretty influential podcaster and an all-around cool dude. But my friend Aaron kind of – changed his life a few years ago. They took their kids out of school and started traveling. They've been to like 35 countries as a family. So they were forced to find a way to become, and, and at the same time building multiple businesses with tens of millions of dollars of revenue. So they were mm -hmm. forced to find more efficient ways to give their kids a higher education. And that's basically what that book is about. I think it might help you out. It might give you some great ideas of how to be more efficient in that part of your life so you can mm -hmm. do what you already know how to do in business. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. I like that. I'll definitely look into it. You said it's called the Fire Five-Hour School Week? Yes, by Aaron and Kalina Amuchastegui. Okay. Um, okay, excellent. That's great. And... Um, and then in terms of, you know, communicating with, with current, with people that we're currently calling, I mean, what I'm, I'm tempting to do is minimize my conversation about what's going on because we all know what's going on. Maybe just sure. touch upon it a little bit um, and, and really just, and just really create a connection. And, and I actually had a conversation with somebody yesterday where, you know, she has an elderly person living in the house that's, um, that's the property. So I spoke to her about, you know, could somebody, you know, whoever's in the house, take some pictures and you, if you send them over to me and based on what you're telling me, I can come up with a market analysis for you. And we'll just have some information so that once everything kind of lifts a bit, we can, you know, we can move forward um, a little bit and, and be a, a few steps ahead, right? I'm doing some pre-work. 
um, is there any suggestions in, because where I'm at in my county in New Jersey, we are in complete, like we're in lockdown. People are not going into other people's houses. There's not any of that. Like, I have to get an appraiser right now into a house, and it's going to be so challenging in an, in an area that's in a complete not lockdown. Um, yeah. So. You're, I mean, it's, it's really encouraging to me. Like, you're in one of the harder-hit areas as far as government response. Like, you have less mm -hmm. flexibility and options than most people on this call. So it's really encouraging right. to me that you have, you've are, you're already thinking outside of the box. Um, you know, anything you can do to, to just be a voice of certainty right now is going to mm -hmm. be a comfort to people. So exactly what you said, don't talk about the coronavirus or the impact it's having on their life other than, you know, Mr. Smith, in a time like this, I'm sure I, I could use some more certainty in my life, and I think maybe you could too. So I, I'm actually not shying away from calling families right now because I realize how stressful this was before all this other stuff was added to it. And mm -hmm. I know that I can bring I can bring certainty to the to your situation as far as the probate is is concerned. There's things that we can do now to get you prepared to be ready to move forward. So when it start when we when we do have access to courts when we do have access you know the ability to sell real estate you'll be at the front of the line not at the back of the line. So you right. understand how getting getting started now while we've got some time and space is probably makes more sense than just you know. Than worrying about what the news says, and mm -hmm. any, if we can just if we can just get them, and one of the ideas that that I, I plan to share on and and our shift happens is you know how do you actually get good quality photography, good quality marketing from your sellers? Like how can we very simply and 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 in a sanitary way, a safe way to not create any li legal liability for ourselves? How can we move th move devices through our our listings and through our prospects? To get the stuff that we can't get in person anymore, and I've got a, mm -hmm. I've got several ideas that I can share with you guys. You know, even to the extent of going and buying a 360 camera, and putting it in a package with Clorox wipes and and instructions on how to pass it through your all of your listings, so you can get 360 tours of, of everything that you have. Um, so I think you're doing all you can do. You have good ideas. Um, I would encourage you to come on, on Monday, come to our shift happens because I'll hear a lot of that, a lot of those ideas on things that you can do remotely, like you are completely locked down. You can keep moving forward and keep your clients engaged and not freaked out. Um, mm -hmm. We'll spend a, right. a couple of hours just going through those ideas. Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. I appreciate that. Thank you, Chad. Great job. Yeah, Very encouraging. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, Keep you're, it up. You're, you're strong, and everybody else on the call, <laughs> listen. Like, she, she could be having an opposite response, but she's running toward the obstacle, and you'll, you'll see, you'll see a, a great return on that, too. And you're helping comfort people in a time when they need it the most. So thanks for sharing. Congrats. Yeah. All right, next up is phone number ending in 8439. You're up next. Hey, guys, this is uh, Brian from Texas. Hey, Brian. Thanks for, thanks for taking my call. Hey. Sure. Uh, we are fully automated uh, with uh, Mailbox Motivator and the ISAs, um, and I got a, a lead or a uh, appointment set for me yesterday by the ISA, but the appointment is 5-4. Uh, pi May 4th, and I was wondering if uh, you would suggest a way to reach out before that to uh, touch base with them. Apparently, they've already uh, accessed some services as far as cleaning out the house and, and getting some remodeling done. I looked up the, the house, and it's a uh, uh, it's on a it's on a river right now, and it's valued. The RPR value was had a range of 600 to 1.2, and uh, um, so I, I, I wanted to uh, touch base with them, obviously, but I, I was looking for some suggestions or ideas on, on how best to go about doing that. Is your May 4th appointment a phone appointment or face-to-face? -face? How was it set? Uh, according to the email, it was set as a phone. Okay. Um, I think it's it's. I think you should reach out and introduce yourself and say, listen, you know, I, you spoke with someone in my office yesterday, and they set an appointment for May fourth, and, and that's great. Maybe that's 
that's the first opportunity you'll have to meet. But I did want to just kind of talk it through with you and see, you know, if there's anything between now and then, now and then that I can do to help you. I know that it's hard to get out and move around right now to find businesses that are open. But we have built a team of people, and we're in touch with that team. We we can we can still get things done. So, is there anything that that seems pressing that you guys need to take care of right now? Can you think of any way that I could help that you're not you're not able to get it done on your own? Okay, and just in, and look for any any entry point that that will give you an opportunity to either meet with them in person or get one of your guys out there. You know, maybe it's maybe it's your landscaping crew. If they've got a one point six million dollar house or whatever whatever the value was an expensive home and they weren't expecting to have to have a lawn contract because they haven't in the past, but now it's time I've, I've, I'm in Virginia to mow three times already. So maybe that maybe maybe there wasn't a plan in place for that, but you can still find a guy who's listed under an essential business a landscaper and you can get him out there to do something for them right um, right but I would I would no, certainly don't shy away from from making a real connection with them just because of a, of a future date call and see what you can do to be better prepared for that appointment call and see what you can do for them right now um, say you know listen I actually have some some there's a lot of real estate agents right now with buyers in this price range looking for these riverfront properties and I know that that you know we're we're no we're not going to be sending people there. But if I mail you uh, a camera in the mail that's really simple to use, could you go if you're over at the property? Could you just take a video and I'll, I'll send it around to the realtors I know that are selling things like this, and just show them that you're very proactive and you're thinking outside of the box and you're already acting in their best interest even before you get that May fourth appointment, and it's going to show well. That's that's great. That's great uh, um, uh, feedback. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I also got another one. Uh, actually, it's it's pretty good. Uh, um, it's interesting. I've I've sent out 43 uh, letters, and the ISA has called all of them, and I got two appointments. So uh, that's a, that's an amazing record, I think. Um, the uh, the second one. Uh, I'm I'm in the San Antonio area, and the second uh, uh, appointment is uh, I'm not sure why they, they filed in our area, but the, uh, the property is in uh, Houston. So typically what you'll see is, so in, if you have assets in more than one state, more than one county, like, uh, you'll, have, you'll have a primary probate, which is usually where the state of residence was, and then there's ancillary probate. So I don't know which it is for you. It, it's if they could have owned though and Houston, but they actually lived in a nursing home in San Antonio. Um, so they had they have an ancillary probate over in Harris County or whatever county that is. Okay, um, that's probably the the story. Um, we have Colette Myers. If you uh, we have an outstanding agent in Houston. I, I know Colette works that market. We may have others, but. Um, if you need a referral agent, look up Colette Myers. Okay, that, that's uh, M Y E R S. Yeah, C O L L E T T E, and I think her website is ColletteSellsHouston.com. I think. Okay. But uh, she she does really well in probate. She follows what we teach, and it'll be very consistent with what you're offering right there. Excellent, excellent. Okay, I will definitely make that referral. And hey, Chad, I want something to want to add. It occurred to me when you were answering the first question. We always tell agents, you know, pre pre Corona, we've always told agents on your first call, you know, make the distinction with the seller and say, hey, do you want to be closing in August or just getting started at that time? This would be a really good opportunity if somebody's on a lockdown. You could just rephrase that and say, did you want to be getting started with your marketing in August, or would you already have a few buyers ready to look at the property at that time? I mean, it's the same. It's the same concept. You know, it's a great time to market the property when, you know, even pre-showing. It's like what Chad, what you did with your stir up uh, a lot of interest and then have the open house uh, a week later. You know, it could be a really effective tool to get them to list with you now rather than wait. Make sense. That's a good point. All right. Good Anything point. else we can help you help you with today? I think I'm good. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. 
Next up is phone number ending in 1845. You're up next. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing great, sir. How about you? I'm doing well. Um, I just had uh, three quick questions. They kind of all relate to each other. Um, okay. So the, the first one is, you know, as far as building up a, a team, um, what's the best way to screen um, potential, I guess, team members? Um, the second question is, then how do you work out the logistics? Because, you know, I hear sometimes uh, people say that, you know, um, we offer you these services and you don't have to pay until we are not part or until closing. Um, how do you work that out as far as with those potential team members? Or, you know, when do they get paid? How do they get paid? And uh, the last question is um, attorney estate planner versus a probate lawyer. Uh, what's the difference then is the attorney estate planner um, also a part of your team, someone you should be looking for? Um, as far as vetting team members, you know, you want to work with vendors who have common va values that are common to yours. So they, they, they need to match, the, you know, what you're offering, serve a, a very high standard of service. And you just need to make sure that when you say that they will be there or you say that they will call, you know that they will call. Um, as far as logistics, don't worry too much about it. You're, you're, from a marketing standpoint, you want to, to appear like one big vertically integrated team, like everything under one roof. But as soon as you've built rapport and you meet with, your, <clears throat> with the, the prospects, then at that point you can say, okay, so here's our plan. Target date is November and you just walk it back and put a date to each of those services that your vendors are going to provide. And then say, when I get back to my office, I'm going to send you an email with each of their names and phone numbers and the date that they'll be calling you. And then you just copy, you blind carbon copy everybody on the email. And everything, the, the whole strategy is laid out in a timeline on one page. And just let your prospect know that, you know, build a photographer, we'll talk to you about, hey, he'll, he'll arrange payments on how to submit the invoice to, the, to the, the estate if you can't pay him from the estate bank account. Same thing with the stager, the contractor. And the estate sale company actually just takes a, you know, there, there's off the top of the gross sale proceeds before you get it. So each of them are going to have their own payment arrangement with your client or your, your, the seller. Don't, don't worry about passing it through your books. Um, you, you really shouldn't be. And my personal opinion is that if you're expecting referrals, you know, if this is a referral relationship where you give them business, <clears throat> they should reciprocate and give you business, then there's no sense in commissioning everything and, and having all these referral commissions and all the accounting that comes with it. Just if I scratch your back, you scratch mine, right? So yeah. don't overcomplicate it. Well, I'm not. I'm personally not looking for a commission. I was just wondering, what do I tell um, the probate family as far as hey, if they ask um, how much does that cost and when do I have to pay? Yeah, just I don't so to just pay. give them the person's name, the date, the time, and let them know that they'll they'll talk to them about uh, how they can arrange payment, and then you and All then right. you're out of it. I've never had that create any extra work or any problems for me. Everyone's like, okay, well, that, yeah, that sounds simple enough. And when you get back to your desk and send that email, that just kind of ties it all together because we're throwing a lot at these people, right? So I want to put it in writing what our what our target date is, what our entire implementation schedule is, and who will be involved each step of the way. That way the seller sees it like they have something. And I don't try to do that at the table. Um, I would rather just do it in a controlled environment following the appointment. It gives me another reason to touch them and, and show them, oh, hey, I'm still thinking about you, right? As far as your last question, um, estate planning attorneys and probate attorneys are really, in most cases, one and the same. Most, you know, most most probate attorneys, they make, most of these attorneys, they'll make some of their money from probate, but ideally they would rather make money from estate planning because then they know they're avoiding, the, 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 they're helping the family avoid the 5% you know, cost of, of probate. Most families pay, a, a, most probates will eat the administration cost, the fees will eat up 5% of the gross value of the estate. So a, a really good estate planning attorney won't ever do probate of, with their own clients. They'll probate other people's clients and then help those families get an estate plan in place. Now that's not how the world works. That's, you know, that's it's not how everybody does it. 
but that's how the really good ones do it. Like a really great probate attorney or a great estate planning attorney. Like if you've met him in person, he won't be probating your estate if he's done his job correctly. Okay. It's, and as far but, as thank you for that. And as far as the email, um, is there like a template or something for that, or I just create my own? Um, for attorney. Like timeline. No, for like the timeline that you were saying. Um, oh yeah, you just it's gonna each one's gonna be different. So you know, it's yeah. we talk about I don't know three dozen different vendor partners. It, it's rare that you ever use more than two on a single deal. You might use an estate sale company and a, photo, a you know a home stager, or maybe a estate sale home stager and photographer. But there's rarely ever more than it's just a small handful. Like I don't think I've ever used more than probably three on a single deal. So it's a pretty simple email, just based on your you're just you're basically just recapping the conversation that you had right when you signed the paperwork. All right, got you. Thank you. Appreciate your help. All right, go play with that kid. I hear him asking for Dada. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, take care. Next up is phone number ending at five eight one zero. You're up next. Hi, this is Soledad Garcia. Um, Hello. You me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, my question was. Um, I mean, do you think they, uh, the name of the website, when it has anything to do with probate, scares away uh, the families or they just want to put you away? Or, I mean, does that have anything to do with that? I mean, I'm having a conversation. For the families that are already in probate, it can help uh -huh. them identify. Like, it could be an identifier for them. So it's something that all of a sudden now they can relate to that word when they, you know, just maybe two months ago they didn't even see it when it was in but now it's like probate, all that catches my eye. So it can have a positive effect on the people who are already in probate. Now, the mm -hmm. team that you've built and the service you're providing is just as valuable to somebody who's aging and, and can no longer take care of their home and they need to transition into a long-term care plan. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you're thinking big and you plan on helping for probate, um, the, one of the concerns is a more scalable brand. So rather than like MiamiProbate.com, it could be MiamiTransitions.com. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you have a name that you can grow into that won't intimidate people who aren't going through probate. Okay. Right. So I mean, some, okay, so I can grow into you. And if you're working on a on getting a website with us, if you um, just call our main number, the 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 people in that in that department will kind of brainstorm with you and try to help you through that, help you come up with a good name if you need it. Okay. Okay? That. All right. Thank you. Uh, next up is phone number ending in 5916. You're up next. Hey, good afternoon, Chad. It's Steve from Pennsylvania. How are you? Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm doing okay. Hey, I'm finally getting off the dime and have had letters sent out, but I was looking at my historical lists. And all those names look different, which is great. So uh, I'm in a county with only 27 per. Should I send out another list? Because I had 26 letters won't go out um, this week. Um, should I increase the numbers as I start to call, hopefully, on Tuesday? Um, now I'm waiting for the letter to come in, hopefully, tomorrow. Give them a couple of days to kind of digest it. And I know you talked about the... Um, you know, optimal times um, based on a MIT study just to start Tuesday morning. And just wanted to know if I should go back through these lists because even though I haven't acted on them, I've paid for them, but just to send out another batch and start working through them at this time. Absolutely. So, I mean, these lists, like you will, you will pull business from these lists for as much as, as long as 24 months. And just like we talked about earlier in the call, the more frequency you touch them with, the, the higher your conversion rates will be. Okay. And my other question for you was, you know, the letter that was sent to me looked good. I wasn't going to like adjust or modify because sometimes I got to put trust in the system and, and faith in it. But in subsequent months, like these lists that go out, I, there should be a different letter, right? Not the same letter like next month? Not necessarily. Um, you know, it's I, I tracked I tracked my first year of mail meticulously, 
and I couldn't find much of a measurable difference between a sequence or the same letter over and over. Um, I certainly tried to prove that out, but I never could really prove it. I had about a 2% response rate on every mailer. Um, and I, I used the one, two, three sequence, the options letter. What every letter that's there, every, any letter you see there has been proven to be effective. So it's more about the frequency than the content of the letter because they all have a pretty common theme, right? They all look different than what other people are sending. So Correct. it's a lot of people spend a lot uh, too much time worrying about the copy in their letters when you know it, it's most important that you're sending multiple letters and get and being there when they're ready. Because right. no matter what a letter says, if someone's just emotionally not ready to deal with this, they're not going to read it. They'll say oftentimes they save ours and throw away the others because it looks like a greeting card and it just they tend to stick around for years. So it's it's you know just if you keep them going, I, like I, for, for me, I, I eventually got to a point where I get sick of tracking letters to see what the response of was you know difference between the A, B, and C in the test. And I just sent the probate options letter three times to every single PR, and I okay. just never thought about it. So okay, well, don't uh, don't ever be af don't be afraid to switch your letters up, and and you know if you if you have a letter that's really working, keep doing that. But if you're not getting the response you want, you can start to layer in an additional letter, and if you see a better response, then just switch to that one. So you should we should always be testing and seeing if we can optimize and get a better result. But um, you don't always have to have completely different letters. Once you find one that works for you, you can pretty much roll with it. Because you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're marketing to different people. And those people, you know, they're, they're, some of them are absolutely motivated to move today so that they'll respond to the first letter. The others might not even read the first letter. They just pin it to the board or the refrigerator. But they really take the time to read the third one because it starts to look familiar to them. Well, this is the third greeting card I've got, envelope I've gotten from this guy. Okay. All right, makes sense. Um, you know, my courthouse is closed right now to the public. I think attorneys and other people are going in, so hopefully next month um, a guy can go in and pull numbers again. We'll see. So, but yep. uh, thanks for your help. I appreciate your exchange uh, on Facebook with Bill Gross about uh, bad underwriting and bad results. Um, I, I think he kind of... <laughs> You got your ire up on that one, Chad. <laughs> All right, we appreciate it. Next up is phone number ending in eight nine one seven. You're up next. Is that hello? Phone number ending in eight nine one seven. It says Norman. I don't know if this is Norman. Hi. Are you there? Oh, doesn't sound like Norman. Uh, no, it's Joy. How are you guys doing? Hi, Joy. Great. What can we do uh, for you? I have a quick question. Um, I spoke to a lady. She was the one who petitioned for probate, um, but with all the this drama with the family, so the judge appointed a fiduciary instead. Do I deal with the the petitioner or the fiduciary moving forward? The fiduciary now has the authority, so you should deal directly with them. Okay, um, and that go. I, mean, I guess. Because she was saying that the house is filled with so much stuff and they're eventually going to sell. Um, how does that work? Is it the fiduciary that's going to make the decision on selling the assets or do they go back to the family and ask for permission? How does that work? You'll actually, you'll actually sign the listing agreement with the fiduciary now because they're the representative of the estate. And okay. when you do your title search, they'll need to close the chain of title by connecting the paperwork from the death certificate to the courtroom to the fiduciary, and they'll actually be the one that signs everything. So they're making a lot of decisions. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is phone number ending in 7976. Hey, guys. It's Renee. Thank you for hey, being here. Hey, Renee. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give a shout out to the company, to you guys in general. Um, I'm not sure who it was. I don't know if it was Kat or somebody else, but uh, they called me and put me in touch with an agent who had a potential listing out of area. It's even kind of out of area for me. Um, but anyway, it's even more out of area for them. So I just love the networking, and we're going to be able to help this guy. He's in New York State. You know, I'm in California. It's an hour away. And what I also appreciate is I do have the website, 
after you guys. So that's like my backup eyeballs, right? <laughs> it's the third party uh, kind of qualifier that has really worked well for me. And just really being of service, I just want to reiterate this. I mean, Chad always says it, but really just coming from a place of service and curiosity for people because he had been talking to, by the way, this is like almost a teardown house. It was a hoarder house. It's been vacant for probably six months. You know, vagrants were in it squatting and started fires. I mean, it's a disaster of a property. But um, I just want to say that I got in his world and was really firm and empathetic and kind of quote unquote um, made more sense or beat out uh, an investor who was trying to come in and, you know, really undercut the price and I think I think kind of take advantage. And another um, local agent, this is 45 minutes away from where I live, but other local agents who were just telling them all kinds of stuff about trying to put it in the MLS and kind of hyping the price and it just none of it made any sense. I'm not making anybody wrong, just none of it made any sense. And so what we're learning here is so valuable to – like, I, I kind of heard all you guys' voices in my head as I was really talking to this guy. You know, I picked up a little bit of here and there and really being able to apply it into when we're out on the street. So I, I just wanted to give a thank you to how much value is really here and what you're providing. You're not just giving numbers and, you know, expecting us to go out on the streets and kind of make a deal. You know, you're really overarchingly wanting to help and help the industry in this niche. And it just it matters. So thanks, guys. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, do we need to get you a therapist since you're here? This is in your head now. Wait, say that one more time. The phone click. Need a therapist referral since you hear our voices echoing in your head now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you're saying that. And it's in, in funny, not funny. This is my 14th year in real estate, and most people love houses and they want to, you know help people and sell houses. Sure, we all want to help people. I actually got into to real estate because I was considering going back to get my PhD in psychology, but I like <laughs> sales. And so this is this is like I'm an armchair psychologist. So I love it. Well, we love you, Renee. Thank you so much. Very kind words, and you can't, I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. We all, we all need that kind of encouragement. We need to encourage each other. And uh, yeah, it, the better – that. No better way to do it than, uh, you know, to show up in these calls and share your stories and share your positive thoughts and ideas. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Three more in the queue. Uh, next one ending in 7487. You're up next. Hi, guys. This is Colette Meyer. Hey. We just Thank gave you a you. referral. The check's in the mail. Out. I, I heard it earlier. Um, so one of the things that I was going to uh, tell everyone is there's a couple of things going on. One, yes, um, just like Chad said, there's a lot of people that live in areas of Texas or other states where they've got one family member in one city, but for whatever reason, they've had to move mom or dad or auntie or uncle to another area, and they've got property in whatever city they used to live in. As a matter of fact, I just walked away from putting up the combination box so the estate sale company can put uh, get into the house for a lead that I got from all the leads. So, um, But one of the things that I was going to say is we've in Texas, and I think in most states, we've got a 25% referral between uh, realtors. One of the things that people like Buffini and some of the other companies do is they, they set up a referral network for realtors so that if there is an all the leads realtor in Texas that maybe a family member is living in Indiana, they can get together and they can refer business back and forth to each other, which I think would be a great thing for us to do. Since we all live in different areas, we're all going to come across family members and property and stuff like that that's in other states. And right now I'm trying to talk with my broker to find out if there's any legal way and, you know, like I do with attorneys, to get them more money at the closing table so that if there's going to be 25%, but there's a way for them to get more money as a line item on the closing document legally, then I want to be able to do that for another realtor, especially now. I mean, I was thinking about it before and I was working on it, but now I think it's going to be more crucial than ever. In that same line of thought, there's two other things that I'm doing for marketing purposes. One is I just rolled out a preferred attorney program, 
and I'll let you guys know how that goes. I don't really have an ROI on it because I literally just did it the other day, but I took, you know, about four or five months worth of attorney emails off of my lead list, put together something in MailChimp, uh, sent it out. I had like a 98% open rate on it. I had nobody that unsubscribed, which I thought was really interesting, and I got a lot of feedback from it. So it's a way for me to keep attorneys involved in the transaction even after they've filed for probate so that they can receive something. And the way that I'm setting it up is that it looks like it's going to come where it actually it does come directly from the seller at the closing table, but it's, it's really a way for me to give something back to them for referring the business to me. So once I have an ROI on that and I've got it completely um, set up and I know that it's working well, I'll come back on and I'll share that with everybody. In the meantime, the other thing that, uh, that I'm doing is I've got people on my probate website. Those are my team members. Um, one of the team members that I have is a financial guy. His whole purpose that he does is his, his entire tagline is a way for people to pay zero taxes or no taxes at the time that they need to start taking money out for their retirement. So he's, he's a wealth builder. He's a great guy. I refer a lot of probate clients over to him because they need to know what to do at the end of the sale when they're getting ready to have the title company deposit $150,000 into their account. They don't want to show that as income if there's a way for them to get it set up or if there's a direction for it to go other than just the estate account, then I want them to be able to do that where they can actually utilize the money and not have it show as income. So one of the things that we're doing on Tuesday, for anybody that wants to chime in, is we're going to do a Zoom and Facebook Live where he's going to talk about that, and that's one of the things that I'm going to have as a probate section on that for executors, family members, businesses, things like that, where they can build some of that wealth and get it directed into an area that's better than an IRA. So that's just a couple of things that I'm doing. Like I said, I really appreciate the shout-out, guys, and I'm going to get off. Um, and if you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to just email me or, or send me a text or give me a call. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, thanks, Colette. Thanks for sharing all that. Jim, are you still there? Oh, Jim. Yeah, I I was down for a minute. I was talking. You guys couldn't hear me. I am here. Yeah, I, I heard everything Colette said, though. Colette, congratulations. Innovative, as always. Great ideas. All right, next up is phone number ending in 6248. You're up next. Good morning. It's Joyce in um, Orange County, California. And, Chad, I wanted to tell you the uh, session that you did yesterday was fabulous. And in that session... You mentioned a book uh, that the name of which started with Upside. Uh, you also uh, mentioned another one that I uh, that was big shift ahead that I was able to find. But when I went on to Amazon, there are about ten books that start with Upside, and I was wondering if you might be able to tell me the rest of the title. Yeah, let me, I'm looking at my right now. So, um, I was going to say there's probably no downside to listening to all of them. You know, bad joke. <laughs> so it's, uh, upside profiting. Oh, it auto played. Uh, upside profiting from the profound demographic shifts ahead by Kenneth W. Gronbach. G R O N B A C H. Oh, that's super. Thanks a million. Appreciate you guys. All right, thank you. Boy, good timing, guys. Last up this week, we're not going to go too much over, is phone number, well, phone number ending in 8975. Are you there or are you gone already? I am here. Oh, good. Okay. Wasn't sure. You're up last. All right, perfect. It was Chris calling you guys from Phoenix. Uh, I had a question about, so a lot of attorneys' offices are closed. Um, and I'm trying to reach out to him still via potential email or phone call and really just trying to figure out a, a good way to, number one, get past the gatekeeper if I can, and what a good conversation starter is with them via phone. Because I know a lot of times you guys say the phone's probably the worst way to do it. So I'm just trying to get creative since I can't really go to their office. Sure. 
it's pretty tough on on the phones, um, but we don't really have an option now. Your best the best opportunity to build a real relationship and get anything from an attorney is give them something first. So if you can come up with anyone in your your circle of influence, and I mean anyone who should have an estate plan, then that becomes an, an A plus referral for them. And with as much going on right now, you can imagine how it's it's very difficult to get anyone to buy life insurance or set up an estate plan because we don't like to admit that we're you know we're we're going to get the we're going to these days. So especially in times like this, people are so much more stimulus stimulus in the environment. People aren't thinking about it. <clears throat> so if you can get people to think about it and show them how it's in their best interest and get them to say, yeah, you're right, we really should do then then reach out to these, these estate planning attorneys and they probably have their phones forwarded to somebody if it's not the you know the partners of the firm. So it might actually be easier to get past the gatekeeper because you hit the phone tree and it forwards you to uh, one of the attorneys and since nobody's there to be a gatekeeper. But the easiest way to, to really get this, you know, get traction quickly is find a way to provide value to them. So, uh, the, you know, the most the, the most beneficial thing to them is bring them business, bring them an estate, someone that needs an estate plan. And there's other ideas, but if you, I mean, if you have past clients, if you have family members, friends, anyone that, you know, has more than $100,000 net, net worth really should have an estate plan in place. And you can offer them a free consultation. Whenever you have some hands raised, you go start calling and say, hey, listen, I, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do right now from a, from a sales perspective. So I decided to raise my standard of service, go back through my entire book of business, and help protect all the people that I've already sold something to. And I'm looking for a state planning attorney that I can really trust to take care of these people in this time. Um, have, I, have I called the right number? And, and naturally, the the conversation you'll you'll get into an organic conversation, and you say, well, listen, you know, the reason I found you is is you guys are doing a lot of probate, so I figure you're well versed and and you're all you know keeping your skill set fresh. We we actually have a team of people that help families in probate, and we basically pick up where the attorney leaves off. So we we consider the attorney the member of our team. And we haven't had a chance to meet yet, but uh, would you could you find any value if we could get cases closed faster? And our number one priority is maximizing the amount of equity the family, which between you and I, that means you a bigger paycheck for you, right? Is that something that that you guys would find valuable as kind of a complementary business to what you're already doing? Mm. And there, and you're in. Now, what about All right. the approach? Well, real quick, just what about the approach of no, no, asking for for myself, you know, I'm interested in, in you know, trusts and wills and, and potentially for myself and maybe kind of after setting up a meeting, spinning that into, um, you know, what I do. Coming from yeah, the that's approach good. It's, it's going to work one, it'll work, right? Yeah. So it, it's okay. a good way to cut your teeth and get a feel for it. And then you can go back to your past and say, you know, guys, in this time, I've been thinking, a lot of things, but one of those things is how much if, you know, I'm, I'm not invincible and there is a possibility, I mean, there's a certainty that we're all going to go and I just don't see why I should pay 5% of the value of everything I've ever been able to accumulate. I can set up a living trust for 1500 bucks, and these attorneys are sitting at home not able to get out and do their jobs. There's no better time than now to, to actually sit down and have a consultation with our legal team. And by the way, it's free. So when can I get you on my attorney's calendar? And see how many people you can get to follow your lead. You know, lead by example. Do your do yours first. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Awesome. All right. Thank you, sir. And we had one more person jump in the queue, so I'm going to close the queue. And last up this this week is phone number ending in five seven seven seven. You're up last. Hey, thanks for taking my call. This is Brian Yates. I'm out of California, Southern California. Hey, Just, Brian. Uh, signed up. Uh, for the uh, leads and everything, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, my first fresh leads come out uh, April 22nd ish, so I'm uh, I've gotten some historical leads, and I just uh, wanted to find out. I got two questions, but the first is, 
um, looking at these, which uh, letter would you start with, uh, Chad, uh, since this is, you know, somebody's already been waiting. I, I got the October leads, by the way. Um, so we just introduced a six-month letter. Tim, what's the title of that letter? Do you know specifically? Yeah, one of them is, is historical uh, agent. The other one is historical investor. Yeah, so you might look at the historical agent letter if, if you're whatever your property um, you know, service is. Figure out one of those best business and. and Okay, great. And then uh, I was really, you know, I've been listening to a lot of your stuff, but I, one thing I've been impressed with as well is, uh, is I'm trying to rebrand uh, my Facebook uh, pages and YouTube and so forth is um, who did you or did somebody else actually do the branding on ATL for that? Um, it, depending on what you're looking at, it was me or Kat. Um, we use Adobe which is an incredible tool that if you're not a graphic designer makes it really easy to make the header images and things like that and I think if if you just get spark I think it's only ten dollars a month it's on a, it's in the Adobe Creative Cloud but I think you can buy it by itself for ten dollars a month and it's worth every penny it, you can very quickly in seconds you can fire out beautiful graphics for social media headers or posts uh, we use it to design all like most all of our images now and chad uh cat said you cut out there she wanted me to repeat it it's adobe spark s-p-a-r-k like a spark plug okay great and in terms of uh, what tools do you use for when you're creating your videos i i really appreciate how uh, when I went through after I signed up and you had those short videos on how to's and so forth, uh, what kind of tools are you using there? So keep it pretty simple. I, I'm a Mac user, so QuickTime comes free on every pre install on every Mac. I do all of my screen share I just do with QuickTime. And then we have transitioned to using uh, Filmora nine as the actual video editing software that we use. And Cat makes a lot of the animated stuff, even in, even a lot of the stuff is even done in PowerPoint. So we use pretty simple tools. Um, we're more focused on the quality of the content than the, the production. But Cat does an amazing job, way better than I ever did. But um, and she is, I'm she's also she's also sharing that it's Wondershare Filmora, and it's thirty nine dollars a year or sixty four dollars a lifetime. So pretty affordable. And it's somewhere between like it has the it's almost as easy to, easy to use as iMovie, but it has a lot more custom a lot more functionality. Um, it's somewhere between like iMovie and um, like Adobe's you know uh, Final Pro, Final Cut Pro. Yeah, I'm just seeing that uh, like you said with this uh, everybody at home and so forth. I mean the the ability to reach out whether it's to uh, the PRs or the attorneys or even to say the uh, you know senior homes convalescent etc you know I think it's a great way for us to be able to connect as well as to you know demonstrate uh, just what we're doing so I appreciate that sure. all right thank you sir I Guys, another great call. Um, I want to end this call like I always do. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. It was truly as usual, but even more so than usual. I think it was a very inspiring call. I want to encourage you to keep, what, keep up what you're doing. Keep encouraging each other and keep reaching out to people. They need it now. Stay healthy and take one idea that you learned on this call, one story, go out and put it into practice and come back next Thursday and share the results with the group. Thank you so much, guys. Make it a great week, and we will talk to you at the same time next Thursday. Take care.